JoinPCTechForum.net is a new site. It's a way we'll be discussing everything related to tech news. They'll be discussing uh, the latest processors, graphic cards, laptops, hard drives, computer cases. They also have a section for pre-built PCs and custom-built PCs, and also a PC straight from the manufacturer. They also be discussing the operating systems and how to troubleshoot them. And said last but not least, they'll also be discussing the latest uh, games and business. The site is brand new, so people will join for the first time on there. So come and sign up today at pctechforum.net. As you all know, the world is mourning Queen Elizabeth II, but there are people that refuse to mourn her death. It will be wrong of me to leave this mic without saying to Britain and everybody else who care, we do not mourn the death of a colonizer and a murderer who came and killed our people and she's wearing proudly a stolen coat on her head. We have nothing to do with the queen. Today, people tweet, hey, we mourn, hey, we mourn the queen. But when Helen Zille tweeted and said that not everything is bad about colonialism, you all said Helen Zille is a racist. How can she praise colonialism? By mourning and praising the queen, you are celebrating colonialism. You are not different from Helen Zille. We were not colonized by the land called Britain. We were colonized by the leadership of Britain that killed our people. So we must not be asked to do wrong things here. We are very clear. The queen does not represent anything good. The EFF statement that was released after the announcement of her death. They wrote this on September 8, 2022. The EFF statement on the death of Queen Elizabeth. The Economic Freedom Fighters notes the death of Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor, the Queen of the United Kingdom and the ceremonial head of state of several countries that were colonized by the United Kingdom. Elizabeth ascended to the throne in 1952, reigning for 70 years as a head of institution built up, sustained and living off of a brutal legacy of dehumanization of millions of people across the world. We do not mourn the death of Elizabeth because to us, her death is a reminder of a very tragic period in this country and Africa's history. Britain, under the leadership of the royal family, took over control of this territory that would become South Africa in 1795 from Batavian control and took permanent control of the territory in 1806. From that moment onwards, native people of this land have never known peace, nor have they ever enjoyed the fruits of the riches of this land. Riches which were and still are utilized for the enrichment of the British royal family and those who look like them. From 1811, when Sir John Cradock declared war against Amakosa in the Zurwild in what is now known as the Eastern Cape up until 1906, when the British crushed the Bambata Rebellion, our interaction with Britain under the leadership of the British royal family has been one of pain and suffering of death and dispossession and of dehumanization of African people. We remember how Nsele died in the aftermath of the Fifth Frontier War, how King Hinsa was killed like a dog on the 11th of May, 1835, during the Sixth Frontier War and had his body and his head taken to Britain as a trophy. It was also the British royal family that sanctioned the actions of Cecil John Rhodes, who plundered this country, Zimbabwe and Zambia. It was the British royal family that benefited from the brutal of people of Kenya, whose valiant resistance to British colonialism invited vile response from Britain. In Kenya, Britain built concentration camps and suppressed with such inhumane brutality the Mau Mau Rebellion, killing Dedan Kimathi on the 18th of February 1957, while Elizabeth was already queen. This family plundered India via the East India Company. It took over control and oppressed the people of the Caribbean islands. Their 
thirst for riches led to the famine that caused millions of people to die in Bengal and their racism led to the genocide of the Aboriginal people in Australia. Elizabeth Windsor during her lifetime never acknowledged these crimes that Britain and her family in particular perpetrated across the world. In fact, she was a proud flag bearer of these atrocities because during her reign, when the people of Yemen rose to protest against British colonialism in 1963, Elizabeth ordered a brutal suppression of that uprising. During her 70-year reign as queen, she never once acknowledged the atrocities that her family inflicted on native people that Britain invaded across the world. She willingly benefited from the wealth that was attained from the exploitation and murder of millions of people across the world. The British royal family stands on the shoulders of millions of slaves who were shipped away from the continent to serve the interests of racist white capital accumulation. At the center of which lies the British royal family. If there is really life and justice after death, may Elizabeth and her ancestors get what they deserve. Issued by the Economic Freedom Fighters. They did not shy away. And I thought it was interesting how people were being really hard and tough on, let's say, the EFF or the professor that spoke up um, against, you know, mourning or just people in general that disagreed with what Queen Elizabeth II did when she was alive. I saw a lot of backlash and I saw how uh, people were offended and for me, my question to those people is when the Irish Twitter was going off and they were going off, go ahead and, you know, check it out if you haven't seen what they've been saying. Like, they are ruthless. So I didn't hear that kind of backlash towards them, but when the EFF or that black professor spoke up, it's like they came for her and they wanted to drag her. So you know, the double standards as always. And also when Pierce Morgan was really degrading uh, Mugabe when he died and people were mourning him. Do you remember what he was saying about him, about him being a dictator, him being vile and all that? Did you have a problem with Pierce Morgan saying that about Mugabe when he died? If you didn't have a problem with that and now you're offended, that tells me that you really need to look in the mirror so that you think about it a little bit more and understand why you are offended when this happens to the queen but you never cared when Mugabe and Gaddafi were being dragged after they died. Anyways fam, let us know down below what your thoughts are about this. I am Ungil Zalalem. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.